So the first tip is how many of us have very valuable conversations with our family and friends concerning money, concerning our group projections when it comes to financials, and just concerning like a proper, well-meaning, good habit. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Awam Kenneth. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and also hit the like button. So today's video is all about how to grow a million naira and I'm going to share some exciting ways on how to do that. Note the topic is controversial but stay here. You're going to get a lot of value for staying here for your time being here. Anyway, please subscribe to the channel. I want to reach the target of a thousand subscribers before the year runs out and I want you guys to help me do this. So if you haven't subscribed, Let's get into it. So the first thing is how many of us have very valuable conversations with our family and friends concerning money, concerning our group projections when it comes to financials, and just concerning like a proper, well-meaning, good habit when it comes to money. So do our friends encourage us to spend more or do our friends encourage us to like invest more, try out new things, read more financial help book, talk about finance a lot more than just talking about um, what's happening on social media space, right? Because I feel like these are important issues that are being neglected and we need to cultivate because it will help everyone. We are in this world and most of us are out here looking on how to survive and we're always fighting for more money and I think what has been left sideways is how to maintain this money once we have gotten it. There are conversations out there saying that a rich man could feel poor and a poor man could feel rich and it also brings me down to this. If you've ever noticed poor people tend to be more generous than rich people. That's a whole logical paradox but I feel like it's just an entry point into the idea so if you're not a little bit more self-conscious on how you spend and maintain your money and have like let's say a longer financial plan where do you want to be in the next five to ten years do you have that written down or do you have dreamed out it might not work word for word but it's just good to have an idea of where you're headed to next. I've come up with five ways which are which I consider basic and basically like a fundamental human right for everyone right now. So the first is treasury bills. So treasury bills or T bills as the name is shortened for is basically loaning money to your government, right? So giving money to Trump, for example, or giving money to Buhari, for example, to go ahead to implement policies and budgets and whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's considered the safest form of investment depending on the fact that your country does not one day wakes up and sells their citizens, their citizenry to MMM, which will never happen. Amen. So depending on that, your money in treasury bills is safe, right? And the tenures for this, we have 90 days, 180 days, and 365 days. So you can leave your money in between any of these three options, right? And it's the interest ranges from um, 9% to like 10-15% depending on the market situation. So it's a pretty healthy platform or healthy medium to keep money that you're not probably using for like a stretch of a period of time in the year to get a good healthy interest growth than just living it out there in your normal account that will be taxed on, billed on and maintenance fee will be hammered upon. And the good thing again about treasury bills is that you do not pay tax on this medium. Isn't that good, right? I feel like a lot of people should know this and at least consider this option or have the ability to consider this option. Because when I, before I learned about this, I went to the bank to ask them for treasury bills and the bank was basically pushing down their own products down my throat, which had less interest. So the more you know, the better decisions you make for yourself. Now, the second one is bonds. So now in Nigeria, the government is trying to um, cultivate good saving habits for its citizenry and they've also come up with a subsect of bonds where you could start with um, a low amount of money so like 5,000 there for instance and we have something called the federal saving, saving bonds where you could start up with 5,000 naira. For something like treasury bills nowadays you need like a hundred thousand naira to start with but some apps are out here where you could start with way lower amount of money right but for bonds, what happens here is the interest go a little bit higher. So you have 10%, 16% that, then the years you leave it for are a little bit more longer. So you have 
two, three, five, ten, twenty, even a hundred years old. So you need to be sure that you're leaving your money there for a good amount of time, right? And this needs to be money that you do not leave day to day on. So money that uh, if anything happens, you are good. Like you're not putting your entire life savings there. Then the next one we have is equity. So if you ever imagined being done with the, that gives you like an entry into fulfilling your dream of being Dangote, basically. So you could own a piece of Dangote's company, which is, uh, which is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange right now. So you just figure out what the price of the share is and you buy. And the good thing about this is that the interest can grow from anywhere overnight, right? So, but the thing here is that growing anywhere overnight also means implies that it could also decrease anywhere overnight too. So you could lose all your investment, which is very, very scary. Now, the good advice here is make sure you're investing for a long period of time. You're not just here to watch the market and make overnight profits. You're here to live it for a good number of years to see the growth in it. So, for example, you invested in Netflix or Apple when they started, right now you'll be a millionaire. That is just the idea of leaving the money over a longer period of time than just there to watch the market and make a quick buck or two and leave. And again, you also pay dividends. So some companies pay investors a percentage of profit they have made back to the investors. So, but bear in mind that not all companies do this every year. Some companies don't do this some, for some years at a stretch. Some companies do this every year. So that could also be a good reason to invest in that company. So if, for example, if Dangote pays interest every year, you could basically, if you own, let's say, 100,000 shares in Dangote, you could be getting a millionaire at least um, in dividends per year, which is very, very exciting, apart from the growth of your stock. You get to double profits in a way. The next one is index fund. So index fund is just when a fund manager comes together with all your money, all the investors' money, and spreads it among a variety of stocks and shares and just watches it. So if one tends to do bad, the one doing good will cover up for the losses. Now there are cons here too, but it's also considered safe than you just being a beginner and going there to just go and dilly dally on some stocks. So it's good to just go to the index fund route, but then again, you might also miss out on some very good profits by just being in that route, but it's also safe. Now, the last one is mutual fund. So mutual fund is just a pool of investors' money too, like index fund, but in a lot wider and diversified markets. So you, your fund manager might invest in index or shares, equity, all that right and you can also invest in the money market so t-bills bonds and all that and also invest in startups so startups like let's say apple for, i'm saying apple is a startup startups are just coming so small tech businesses that are just getting their foot on the ground they could invest in it or in blue chip companies which i've already mentioned like shares so these are like the five ways so Treasury bills, bonds, equity, index funds, and mutual funds. These are like a very good start for any beginner out there. And I'm doing this because there is a lack of awareness on these platforms or on these mediums, right? And I feel like a lot of people should be able to know this by now and we should have good conversations concerning these financial instruments, right? So now, some examples for Nigerians watching this video where you could also just test the waters and see. I will just only talk about two here, which I've just gone through. Um, there's Farm Crowdy and there's Tribe Agric. So they are basically middlemen between investors and farmers and they connect these two people together. And you, as an investor, you get a percentage of profits over a time period. So for example, if you want to invest in a maize farm through Farm Crowdy or Tribe Agric, um, they could tell you after a period of six months, right, you get this percentage. Now the percentage are a little bit more higher than treasury bills, but also there are also some risk factors involved. Um, but the platforms are said to be insured. If anything happens, do give you back your principal interest, your principal capital, right? And if all goes well, you get that. If that doesn't go well, then sorry to you. 
But the good thing about investing here is make sure that whatever you invest in is money you could part with, right? So make sure you have enough emergency funds apart from the money you are investing. So make sure you have enough funds to keep you true um, to the next day. Now, when it comes to growing a millionaire, a very practical example would be to save money. So if you earn a hundred thousand naira a month, right? Just take out a little bit part of that money and save it consistently over the years. Now, if you do that over the years, within and apply a little bit of interest on it. So let's say every month that thirty thousand naira you're removing gets a one percent interest. So in a year that makes it over like twelve point something um, percent in interest per annum. And you do that consistently over a year, over let's say a time period of five years. In one year, you have saved over 360,000 Naira. Then when you put in the 10% or 12% interest on that number, you get an additional interest. But you know you have been doing this every month. So now you now have compounding interest, which now grows your money. So between the period of like five to 10 years, you are able to grow from 30,000 Naira to a million Naira. That is a good thing about interest and the fantastic thing about compounding interest because when your money starts to compound, right, it's basically you're sleeping and working or sleeping and earning. You get those motivational speakers. This is where their intro comes in. You get, you get to sleep and your money works for you by virtue of compounding interest. So these are, these are informations I just want to share and put out there for everyone to know because I know it will help a lot of people. And again, before you invest in any instrument, do not take word for word from wherever the source you're getting it from. Make sure you do your own additional research, right? Because there's some things that I would just assume you should know by now that will not be mentioned in this video, but by virtue of doing your research, you will go ahead and know those things and see if they work for you or not. Because not everything works for everyone. We are all unique human beings out here and we work in different ways, no pun intended. So that is just a feedback to keep in the back of your mind when making investments. Remember to do your research and always protect die capital, right? Always protect it and you would be good in the long run. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one and subscribe y'all.